Hey, mathematicians, get ready as today we are going to talk about how to solve problems involving fraction division. Let's get into our I will statements first. Remember, your I will statements are your goals for this lesson. They are what we are trying to work on and learn more about throughout our time together today. As we continue on in our lesson, make sure you have your mind focused on these three things and showing them to your teacher. I will read the I will statement first, and then we will read it again a second time together. Make sure you're reading it nice and loudly so I can hear you, but no shouting necessary. Listen to me first. I will define important information in word problems. Read that one with me. I will define important information in word problems. The next one. I will represent information in word problems with a picture. Read that one with me. I will represent information in word problems with a picture. And the last one. Listen to me. I will divide whole numbers and fractions. Read that one with me. I will divide whole numbers and fractions. For our first activity today, you will each need your own whiteboards and markers. This activity is going to review some of the material from our previous lesson. Write the following equation on your board. 1 half divided by 2. Say the division sentence with me. 1 half divided by 2. If we were going to solve this problem, 1 half divided by 2 equals 1 fourth. Say this division sentence with me. 1 half divided by 2 equals 1 fourth. Underneath where we wrote that, we're going to write 1 half divided by 3 equals. 1 half divided by 3 equals 1 sixth. We can see a pattern starting here. Let's continue. 1 half divided by 4 equals. In the above two problems, when we did 1 half divided by 2, we got 1 fourth. Our denominator and our whole number gave us our denominator on this side, and our numerator stayed the same. The same thing happened in our second problem. The denominator times the numerator gave us the denominator in our answer, and the 1 stayed the same. Let's see if we can figure out how that pattern would continue down here. If we did our denominator times our numerator to get our denominator, we would get 8 and we would leave one the same. If we were going to switch this operation right now as a division problem, it would be this. If we wanted to switch this around, we would switch, leave one half the same, switch our division to multiplication, and turn one fourth around. Let's see if that gives us 1 eighth 2. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 4 is 8. It does. That confirms our pattern. Let's switch up the fraction we're working with. Let's do 1 third divided by 2. But that's not the only one I'm going to give you. Let's do 1 third divided by 3. 1 third divided by Four. Remember, if you keep the first fraction the same, change division to multiplication, and flip your final fraction, which would be 2 over 1, flip that around so you would have 1 over 2, and solve the multiplying fraction problem. 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 2 equals 6, it'll give you your correct answer. Try that with the bottom two division problems. Now that we've had a chance with some of 
consistent fractions, let's try some random ones like one fifth, one fourth. How about even one eighth? Let's record these fractions on our boards and then let's multiply them. Let's do one fifth time. Oh, sorry. Divide it by three. One fourth divided by four and one eighth divided by six. Pause the video and come back when you're ready to see the answer to these three. Check your answers and read these final equations with me with the correct answers. One fifth divided by three equals one fifteenth. One fourth divided by four equals one sixteenth. One eighth divided by six equals one forty eighth. Nice job, mathematicians. If you got any of those or even gave them your best shot, give yourself a high five or pat on the back. I'm proud of you. Now let's get into our new lessons and reviewing our problem sets for today. For our activity today, we are going to look at the problem sets for this specific unit. For this activity, I'm going to go through and I'm going to model the first problem. We're going to talk about specific things in the problem to pull out. Maybe something we can draw, what can we draw, and what conclusions can we make from a drawing, and also how we're going to use our drawing to help calculate and solve the problem. We will work on the first problem together. Let's read problem number one together before we go through the methods to solve the problem. Miss Silverstein bought three mini cakes for a birthday party. She cuts each cake into quarters and plans to serve each guest one quarter of a cake. How many guests can she serve with all her cakes? Draw a model to support your response. We know from the problem, we know that Miss Silverstein bought three mini cakes. So I'm going to start by drawing a picture of those three mini cakes. I'm going to start with one big block. And I'm going to split that into three separate parts. And this represents those three mini cakes. Also based on our reading, I know that these three mini cakes have already been cut into quarterly pieces. That means each of these individual squares needs to be cut into four pieces. So I'm going to start with the first one. To cut it into four pieces onto your board, you're going to go to the first square and you're going to draw three dotted lines equally spread apart. Watch me do the first one. One dotted line, two dotted line, three dotted line. I put them as equally spread apart as I could. I'm going to continue in the other two boxes. Draw down your whiteboards as well. Split the second box. And I'll split the third box. If you need more time to split your boxes, you guys can pause the video now, okay? Remember, it doesn't need to be perfect. We just want to try our best. Because we split each of these mini cakes into quarters, and we know the total amount of mini cakes we have, I'm going to write that into an equation. We started with three total mini cakes. We split them up. We were divided them into quarters. So quarters is also represented by saying one fourth. Now let's see how many total pieces we got when we split it up. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We got twelve total pieces. Now our question in the original problem said that each guests would get one quarter slice, which is means one slice equals one guest. So because we have 12 slices, we can have 12 guests at this party. Let's write that in a full sentence. Miss Silverstein can have 12 guests 12 guests, period. Now, this isn't the only method to solve this problem. Is there another method you can think of before I can show you? Well, let me get it down for you. 
because we drew this one out with a box, we're going to take our next one and draw it a different way and see if we get the same answer. For our second method in representing the problem with Miss Silverstein, let's use a number line to help us solve this problem. So I'm going to draw a number line at the top of my board. And I'm going to use my number line to help represent each of the pieces of cake. I know that Miss Silverstein made three pieces of cake. So I'm going to start my number line at zero and label one, two, and three on my number line. I know those are going to be important parts of this. I know that each of these chunks or each of these pieces represents one of the mini cakes that Miss Silverstein bought for the birthday parties. I also know from our problem that each of these chunks is split into fourths. So I'm going to split it up. One, two, three. By adding three lines in between each of the whole numbers that I have. So I added three here. I'll put one, two, three between the one and the two. And three between the two and the three. Because I put three lines, I split each of these chunks up into quarters or fourths. Just like the problem said, Ms. Silverstein cut each cake into quarters. And she was going to plan to serve one of those quarters to each of her guests. Now, let's count how many quarters we have. Zero quarters. Then we have one quarter. Two fourths. Three fourths. And four fourths on one. That makes sense. Let's keep counting. Five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, eight fourths, nine fourths, ten fourths, eleven fourths, twelve fourths. Whew. Since each of the pieces of cake was cut into fourths, Emil Silverstein wanted to serve her guests however many pieces of cake there were, we have to look at how many fourths we had. And we had 12 fourths. That means that Miss Silverstein, just like we said with our first method, Miss Silverstein can serve 12 guests. Nicely done, mathematicians. We were able to look at this problem and draw it in two ways, using a box method and splitting that up and also using a number line. You are going to continue to work on the problem set problems. Make sure that you go through, identify a way to draw a picture, there could be more than one, and then show your work and explain your reasoning in a full sentence before moving on to the next problems. Good luck, mathematicians, and I'll see you soon.